So this video is on electron configurations in the ground state after argon. And the reason why we draw a line in the sand there, as it were, is because of the rule that we always put electrons in ground state in the orbitals and sublevels with the lowest energy first. Now watch the pattern, right? The first thing we always do is we put them in the 1s. And then if there's extra electrons, we put them in the 2s. And if there's more, we put them in the 2p. And we do 3s and then 3p. That covers 18 electrons. By the way, the dashes represent orbitals. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine orbitals with 18 electrons, right? Once you get after, once you get down to this point in the periodic table, right? This is right here at 18 is right here. That's argon. And you go back into the fourth row, something weird happens. You don't put the electrons in the next thing you think you're going to put them in. They don't go into 3D. Why? Turns out experimentally, electrons have less energy when they're in the 4S sublevel than they do in the 3D. The 4S, so in other words, you basically start putting electrons in the fourth energy level before you finish filling in the third. And that seems to confusing. But the periodic table has a clear pattern that you can recognize. The 4S is right here, like right there underneath it, the 4S. So you end up putting electrons in the 4S sublevel before you put them in the 3D. Okay, and the pattern gets really weird, but there's some really easy things to notice here, which means for, for a kid who learns it pretty well, you can tell me what the electron configuration is going to end with based on the position of the atom on the periodic table. Watch this. Okay, let's say, well, let's see, let's do one first, okay? And I'm going to use the periodic table that I have next to me. I'm going to pick an element that's not that big in electron configuration. So we're going to do vanadium. That's not topic number 23. And vanadium is right here in that little spot right there, okay? Now, vanadium has a total of 23 electrons, okay? And we're going to fill it in nice and carefully following the pattern here, right? Now, it's got 23 electrons, so it's going to start off the same way. 1s2, 2s2. 2p6, that's the first electron, so we're down to 13, right? Then we go to the next thing. We start filling the 3s. That's, that doesn't change in the 3p6. We used up another eight electrons. So now we got five remaining, right? Now here's the thing. You might want to do 3d5. You can hold 10 electrons, right? Because it's a d sublevel. It's got five orbitals, right? But according to the periodic table, right, when we get at this point, an f now, there's this 3s, then 3p, this would be 3p6. That's the last thing you write for argon, right? Once you go here, you start filling in 4s. Now, the nice thing is, if it's in the fourth row, right, you're gonna, it's going to have it's gonna have 4s electrons in there, right? But in this section right here in the middle, this like this, where they took a, like it looked like somebody took a bite out of the periodic table, like this section right here, it's going to be one energy level less. So we're going to do 4s, 2, and that leaves us with three electrons, and then we're going to put them in the 3d, 3d3. Now notice the pattern, 4s, 3d, then you go back to 4p, then you go to 5s. The s's and the p's always line up with the rows, okay? The th this area right here we call the d block because anything in there, its electron configuration is going to end up end, end with a d. If it's the third element over, it's going to end up at D3. If it's the fifth element over, it's going to end up at D5. If it's the first one, it's going to be D1. All right? So, for example, let's say I'm doing um, I'm doing uh, zinc, Zn. Zn is right here, okay? It's in the fourth row. You're going to fill in the four S's, and then you're going to do all the three D's, and you're going to have 10 electrons. It's going to be right. It's going to be 3D10. That's what it's going to end up with. But we can work that out. Watch. I'm going to erase all the mess I just made on here, okay, and just leave the zinc there, okay? Ready? Zinc, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. That's the first 18 electrons. Zinc has 30, so 30 minus 18. We've got 12 left. Okay, what do we do next? We do the 4s next. Put a 2 there. Now we're down to 10 electrons. D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, D9, D10, 3, D10. If I had to do the next element over, gallium, right, it'd be the exact same electron configuration, but I have one more. So you go back to this. It's going to be end up with the, everything. This is going to be everything in this column is going to end in P1. Everything in this column is going to end in P2, right? 
So I do this gamma, go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. That's 30, that's 30 electrons, but gallium has 31. Where does the next electron go? Right here, 4p1. All right, now. I can base so I, every if it, you're in this row you're going to end in 4d you're in this row you're going to now you're going to find the good thing is if you're in this row here your s's and your p's are going to match the row number your d's are going to be one less okay and you can see the pattern so just to talk to talk about the general pattern here right i do 1s first then 2s then 2p then 3s then 3p then 4s then 3d then 4p then 5s and 4d and 5p 6s now here's the weird thing after 6s we do this row see the problem is the periodic table would be way too long because these two rows here go into this space right in here i think we'll attack that in class but let's just do one long electron configuration okay i'm going to erase all my mess again so we can see it and i'm going to pick an element that's all the way down here like way down the bottom i'm going to pick ready this element right here Okay, now this element is, is lead. This is PB. I'm telling you right now, I know lead is going to end in P2 because it's in this column. It's in the second column in what we call the P block. And everything in there ends in P2 because the thing before would end in P1. And this right here would end in D10. So I kind of know what my electron configuration is going to be before I do it. Now, lead's got a lot of electrons. It's got 82 of them. Okay. The good thing is it's going to start the same way. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to erase again, nice and slow. Ready? I do the 1s, 2. That's down to 80. Then, right, I've done that. Now I go to 2s. That's this one. 2s, 2. Done. Now I go to 2p. That's got 6. 2p, 6. Now I go here, 3s. That can hold 2. Now I go here. 3p that can hold six i'm not even keeping track of my electrons because i can just follow it on the table next thing i go is 4s that can hold two next thing i go is to 3d that can hold 10. next thing i go is to 4p that can hold six next i go to 5s that can hold two 5s2 i'm running out of space i'm gonna do it down there next i go to 4d that can hold 10. 4d10 next i go to 5p that can hold six 5p6 now, so I go to 6, that can hold 2, 6s2. Okay, now, the weird thing is, I don't do I do not do this next. I go down here first, all the way through this. I do 4f next. That's what the arrow means. And that can hold 14. Again, I'm not keeping track, but I could if I wanted to. After I get done with this, I go back and start here again. I do 5d10. That gets me to here. I got through all this. And now I'm in row six, I'm gonna end in six P, and I'm gonna end in six P two. That's the whole electron configuration. You can check this on your own pair table. Two dash eight dash eighteen. The third energy level is filled. The fourth energy level is also filled, so that's thirty-two. The fifth energy level has a total of eighteen electrons, and the sixth one has a total of four. And this will match up on your periodic table. All right. Um, this diagram here, I would suggest you memorize, quite honestly. It's not that hard to memorize. The way I always remember it is this. I remember if you're in row four, the D is one less than the row it's in. The F is always two less than the row it's in. So if you're doing something in the sixth row and you end up here, it's 4F. But the D is 5D, one less than six, right? F is two less than the row it's in. D is one less than the row it's in. I'll say that again. The D is one less than the row it's in, in terms of its energy level, and the F is two less than the row that it's in. Hope that helps.